you may have had an episode of vertigo. Uh, you woke up in the morning and the room was spinning around in a circle and you had significant nausea. Um, you may have been laid up all day long in bed. You may have even gone to an emergency room and been told that you have a diagnosis of vertigo and essentially given symptomatic therapy to make yourself better. Vertigo really is a description of a symptom. It's not a diagnosis. And in most of those cases, the patient actually has a diagnosis of labyrinthitis. So the labyrinth is the inner ear balance organ. And if that organ becomes inflamed, then you will have an episode just like I've described. Interestingly, that same inflammation can affect the hearing organ because the cochlea, the hearing organ, and the labyrinth are connected and share fluid. And if this occurs, the patient can have very significant sudden hearing loss Well, the hearing just drops out dramatically on that side. Patients may arrive with vertigo only, hearing loss only, or a combination of the two. Now, we have neat forms of therapy which we'll describe to try to eliminate that and repair it. And then we also want to look for the source. When it comes to repairing it, myself or one of our physician assistants can apply a small numbing jelly to the surface of the eardrum. And once the eardrum is numb, we can deliver medication to fill up the middle ear cavity to go across a permeable membrane to get the medicine inside the fluid that surrounds the hearing and balance organ. That treatment is called a trans-tympanic dexamethasone treatment. It's a very effective form of therapy for vertigo from labyrinthitis or sudden hearing loss syndrome, and typically it's coupled with an oral steroid. We want to both treat the condition as well as the source. The source lives down this. This is the eustachian tube. So down here is the nose. Inflammation in the nose is typically the cause. It goes up the eustachian tube and goes across that same membrane to get into the fluid, and that's what generated the problem in the first place. So our algorithm is to identify this and treat it, but also do CAT scans and look with endoscopes back at the nose. And if there's a structural issue or a chronic sinus infection or bad allergy, that primary issue gets addressed along with it to make sure that when we've been successful, that that success will stick.